What's up, everybody? This is the VSM Real Estate Podcast, getting you closer to massively successful players in the Twin Cities real estate market. I'm your host, Andre Anderson. We're today joined by Brian Kurzweil of Fairway Mortgage. Hello, thanks for having me. How's it going, Brian? Very good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Yeah, we tried doing this last week, but yes. uh, you had to reschedule. Yeah, yes. both thanks of us. For, uh, thanks for working with my schedule. And of course, yeah. Clients come first. Of course, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Too, we're, we're too busy yeah. at doing actual work. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> so. But no, yeah. I'm excited to do this. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I think you're the first lender that we've had on. Sure. Um, and uh, you're housed here in VSM, and uh, a lot of the agents are getting to know you and your services. Yep. Um, had a, an excellent uh, kind of presentation where Joe put Chippendales yeah, on that. Was that was a uh, good, that was great. good joke, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, so, yeah, can you kind of tell a little bit about uh, maybe yourself, like yeah. your history and how you got into um, lending and then maybe Fairway Mortgage and just kind of give a, a good summary of, uh, you know, an introduction to all of our listeners? Definitely, definitely. So I had a, a family friend who was and is still a loan originator, and she knew of a credit repair company that was starting um, I was young at the time, 26, 27, didn't know much about credits, uh, but my father did always teach me the simple things, pay bills, get a credit score, open this, use it this way. Mm-hmm. So I thought I had a good understanding, but uh, ended up working for in the credit repair, credit education field for almost 10 years with two different companies. And um, I loved it. You know, I'm FICO certified, which basically in a nerd way to put it is I know everything when it comes to credit, the bureaus, what to do, what not to do, how to make sure your profile is in the strongest position possible for a credit card or for an auto loan or personal loan, whatever the goal may be. Uh, I definitely learned a lot in my nine, 10 years of doing it. And I could talk credit till midnight tonight. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love talking credit. I love educating because the education has never been there Mm -hmm. in high school, college, the word credit has never been brought up. Yeah. I'm 36 now. Maybe it is now, but I don't believe that it is. Yeah. Uh, there's no community ed courses on it, really. So just to be able to go out there and just show people and educate people how it works, I, I get a high from it. I love it. For sure, yeah. No, I think it's just this huge, ambiguous, like, monolith of mystery for yeah. most people. Uh, I graduated high school in 2010, and they never really talked about credit yeah. almost at all. Yeah. And I just, you know, they got a credit card when I was 18 um, and, you know, just try to slowly work things and uh, just try to get that um, that payment history built up because it takes that's like one of the most critical parts, right? And, yeah. And it uh, takes a long time to yeah. get to like that excellent. I think it's like uh, fifteen. Well, like thirty percent, thirty five percent of our score is payment history. Yeah. How do I make the payments back on the money that I borrow? Mm-hmm. And a lot of people that think the cash is king and they don't have good scores, they don't have scores, they don't understand why. Mm-hmm. And I always say, you know, you're, you're asking the bank to borrow three hundred thousand dollars to go buy this house. You yep. can't even show right now. Like, I know you can, sir, mm-hmm. but you can't even show right now that you can manage a simple credit card. Right. FICO is a 100% risk assessment. Mm-hmm. So let's build that profile up and make sure that you're in a position to purchase that house. Right. So I was doing that for years, and I loved it, and I, uh, I was building a great relationship with uh, a smaller independent mortgage company that recently has been purchased by one of the big boys, but I got to know the owners very well. I was working with all of the loan originators, became friends with all of them, fixed all their clients' credits, and went to happy hours and golf outings. And, you know, every once in a while, the owner would start whispering, you know, come on, come on over, start doing this, Mm -hmm. start doing this. And it was always in the back of my mind that one day, you know, it would be, it would be fun to do, rewarding to do. Um, and I could take what I've learned in these nine years and continue. I'm not going to lose any of that. I'm going to be able to build right. off of that and help them hit their end goal, which is home ownership and getting their kids to play in a backyard, which mm-hmm. is huge. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I knew I was going to get licensed one day, called them up, had a couple meetings, interviews, if you want to say, and got licensed. And I was really able to uh, hit the ground a little running because mm-hmm. of my background, which is, it's been, it's been wonderful. And I, I love it every day. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. What's that process to get licensed for, you know, being um, a mortgage lender and everything? Hell, hell. I, mean, <laughs> I, I wasn't, I wasn't the, the, the smartest student. I wasn't the best student. I'm not a very good test taker. Uh, but it is, uh, it's, the, the tests are very tough. In Minnesota, oh, yeah. you need to get federal tests and then you need to get a state, state test. test as well. Yeah. Uh, and they were, um, you get three opportunities. First one wasn't really the best. only three. Wow. And well, then you got to wait six months. Oh, okay. And at the time, I have. Well, I'm still married, but I have two kids now. I have three, but it's like you know, you're older and uh, you have a mortgage and you have cars and right. 
groceries. I'm like, okay, I need to pass this dang test. So right. I locked myself in the, clo- in the in the bedroom for months, and first test didn't go that well, but I was able to get a good idea of what the test was like, mm-hmm. and uh, destroyed it the second time, and nice. here we are. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, <laughs> man. Then the fun began. Then the fun <laughs> began, yeah. Now you just talk about credit, help people that's get right, loans, all right. that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, you recently kind of moved to, to Fairway Mortgage. I did, yes. Um, can you tell a little bit more uh, to our audience about who Fairway is and what kind of establishes them as, you know, like what their like, kind of unique selling, prop- or, Definitely. you know, kind of unique proposition and everything? Definitely. So uh, myself and two other uh, larger, larger than me producers left our previous company, opened up our own branch uh, at Fairway Independent Mortgage Company based out of Madison, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. They are licensed in all 50 states, which is fantastic. If I have a client that's moving somewhere, I know that I'm going to be able to give them a loan originator that we can trust. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we are one of only a couple branches in in Minnesota. We're based out of Minnetonka. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the nice thing about Fairway is the biggest difference that I see, other than the unlimited amount of programs that we offer, is the support system that, you know, the borrower may not see, but the process behind the scenes Mm-hmm. Uh, this would be technically my third company. I started at one that was bought out by another one, so then this would technically be my third. Mm-hmm. And the support's been night and day, and this process has been night and day mm-hmm. for a borrower that mm-hmm. uh, I didn't even know was even out there because you don't uh, know what you know. You, right, know, you don't know sure, what you yeah. don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Fairway is uh, top five in the nation in FHA mm-hmm. lending in volume and also in conventional. So they are they are a very big player in the mortgage industry. For sure. And that definitely helps out a lot too when people are kind of looking to probably purchase their first home a lot of times. Yes. Uh, you know, your services with uh, mastery of credit yes. can like massively just, like help a lot of people that are kind of in that trouble and, and whatnot. So. Yeah, and, it, and it's been nice. I mean, I've tried to, I've helped uh, thousands of people fix their credit. I don't obviously remember all, the, all of them, but I have probably brought in, 15 to 20 clients through the credit process and then I've helped them purchase even after I left the credit industry Yeah, just because of, of that trust. And, you right. know, I, I would sit at the table or over the phone and having a consultation with these borrowers and, and they're defeated. Mm-hmm. They just met a loan originator that said your credit's X and throws it in the recycling bin and call me in six months when you fix your credit. Right. No, well, no what guidance. does that mean? Yeah. I mean, how, okay, me as a client, what do I do? I, I don't even know what that means. Mm-hmm. So then they'd get a hold of us, and I'd sit down with them, and I'd explain it, and you could see the light at the end of the tunnel, and now they have the education. And I want to make sure in this industry that I will always take the time to continue to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to become too busy where I can't give that service to my clients because they deserve it, Mm -hmm. and everybody deserves to have the best profile possible to get the best rates and the best pricing possible. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, that's always my uh, that's that's definitely my niche and why I want to continue my career is for sure also helping those people that aren't approved now and not give up and you'll get there yeah it's not if it's just when right no doubt yeah you just kind of uh, consistently work on it yes. and everything i'm guessing you see sparkles in their eyes you know oh, it's crazy. a lot of times I mean, because like this years of joys at the closing table for I sure mean, never yeah. thought never thought in a million years they'd be there mm-hmm. i have a closing coming up in the middle of next month i i literally met these people four years ago oh wow and they've yeah. gone just through some hard times in life and mm-hmm. they are building a brand new house and nice. they're closing on the 15th of August. And every time I talk to them, it's just like tears of joy. It's like, yeah. that's what it's all about. Is it, this is their first house, correct? They're, uh, or foreclosure 10 plus years ago. Ah, okay. So gotcha. a yep. new start. Yep. It's a Definitely completely a brand new yeah. start. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, it's success stories. Yeah. I'm a, I, I love the fan, uh, the book called Raging Fan. Oh, I haven't heard of it. And oh. it's, um, do you know, sorry, who, who's a raving by? fan, raving fan. Um, no, I, don't. <laughs> uh, I don't recall. I think it's actually in my office, though. But it's all about having people. You know, you treat people the way that they should be treated, mm-hmm. and you help them hit their goal. They're gonna, they're, they're your walking billboards for sure. And they're gonna yeah. be there for you forever. Mm-hmm. And that's I want to call. That's what I. That's what I want to cultivate. Yeah, build a, an empire of yeah. uh, raving fans. That's Hopefully right. not raging. That's you know, right. or not yeah. raging. <laughs> and you know, and not just with clients, but also realtors. I mean, that's that's for very sure. that's big to me. I mean, there's not all realtors. You know, everybody's obviously in it to make money, but it's yeah. important to me to work with realtors that are on my team that I'm an extension of the realtor. Right. That's the way that I consider that's the way that I consider my role is you're the one that starts building the relationship, showing them the house is getting them in love, mm-hmm. and then I, it's a handoff from me, then yep. I'm an extension from you and then we're all just their biggest fans. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, the team play is super important, yes. um, and you're definitely partners in the in the transaction from realtor to lender and yep. um 
so people that are listening that are like looking to Edu- get educated on maybe credit or yes. uh, looking for their first home, all this kind of stuff. I know Jamie uh, just uh, last week kind of uh, talked a little bit about, you know, what's the first time home buying process like. Um, it's so pivotal to have, um, of course, people that are extremely knowledgeable, whether it's a realtor or a lender, and then also having somebody that is really good with the team dynamic. And uh, when somebody, you know, like kind of hands the file off, like the realtor got the purchase agreement and everything is going, how good is their communication together? Right. All that kind of stuff is definitely critical. Huge. Um, just, you know, f- uh, working in the past with some people, uh, the, sometimes the communication will break down or something will happen. Yes. And, and uh, there's just this little tiny detail that pops yep. up and then, like, it turns into some, th- some type of mess that delays closing. Absolutely. You know, all that kind of stuff. So Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Got to be an open book throughout the process yep. on all ends. Yeah, it's for sure. Be. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, so for people that are kind of interested in um, – you know about like well, oh, what's this credit thing or um you know maybe i have bad credit yeah. um what are like some like quick tips that you generally give people that are like probably the most impactful Absolutely. for people that are looking at uh improving their credit yeah great question so our our credit report consists of revolving debt so credit cards and then installment debt installment loans mortgages auto loans student loans accounts like that um we need to make sure that we are utilizing one, one to three revolving credit cards. Mm. I have a credit card, and really, it, it's a game when it comes to credit cards. I have a credit card that the only thing that touches it is my Netflix. Mm-hmm. Then my checking account just goes in every single month and pays it off. Yep. As silly as it sounds, I, ask every, I asked every client when I used to sit with them, if I asked you what your ideal bal- limit balance to limit scenario is on a credit card, everybody, majority of the people always said, 30%. I've right. always heard 30%. I saw it online. So-and-so told me, well, again, going back to FICO, you're going to walk into a bank and you're going to ask to borrow my money as I'm the bank. I'm going to look at you as 100% risk. Mm-hmm. Are you a solid risk or are you a risk? Mm-hmm. And if you want to use my money, my money as my bank, I'm going to base it solely off of that. Mm-hmm. So the difference between having credit cards with $0 on them to having credit cards with $1 balances on them is drastically different. Mm-hmm. You need to be showing that you're a positive risk. Now, having $0, is that a bad thing? Well, no. But having $1, your profile is going to be in a much stronger position to purchase at the best rates possible. Mm-hmm. So having a couple of revolving credit cards, you know, use it once a month for Chipotle or a, a pack of gum. It could be any type of activity, but have that balance to limit ratio as close to 1% as you can. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes to installment debt, there's an account called Self Lender, S E L F L E N D E R, selflender.com. Mm-hmm. And basically, what it is, a simple way to explain it, it is a savings account that reports to all three bureaus. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it looks like you are, you are making monthly payments every month for one year. Mm-hmm. At the end of that one year, you get your money back. Oh. It, personal loan, savings account, however you want to call it, it mm-hmm. reports to all three bureaus and it reports as an installment debt. Yeah. So now you're going to have one or two revolving debt. You're going to have that installment loan. That's going to be a great way to start really building that profile. Right, yeah. That's like super tactical and an awesome yes, trick. You absolutely. Know, you know, and one other thing that share. I like to do is if we know the borrower is not going to be buying for months, you send me a client that says, you know, they're moving here in the winter. Yeah. Well, let's get a soft poll. Let's get a credit report pulled online. They're not FICO scores. I don't care what your scores are online. I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at more of the profile. Mm -hmm. And again, this is going back to what I truly believe most loan originators don't do. They don't want to do. Mm -hmm. We'll do a soft poll on their credit report and I'll give them pointers to get them from a 698 to a 720 to get an eighth better in rate or Mm -hmm. pricing, Mm -hmm. whatever that goal is, because they deserve it. Mm-hmm. That's let's get them in the best position possible. I know I said it seven, ten times, but that's what it's all about. For sure. So yeah. give it, just going the extra mile for these clients because I know that this might not be their last house, or they may have a friend or family that also needs our service. For sure. And I mean, you're kind of helping out, you know, a fellow human being by getting that's a right. lower rate and all that right. kind of stuff. I know you love talking rates, but <laughs> I, love, I love rates. You love rates. Yeah. <laughs> Big meeting tomorrow. About yeah. About rates. For the Federal Reserves, which is going to be very important, but right. not to get into all rates. But yeah, this week, again, rates went down to like 3.74 average and oh down gosh. from a little bit higher threes last week. And next or la- last year at this time was mid fours. So yeah. I mean, it's been 
That's insane. Fantastic. Especially yeah. with the projected one we were looking at yeah, last right. year. We were thinking. We never was, thought we'd be here. Right, exactly. Yep. Yeah. That was only going to go up. So, a big meeting people, tomorrow so. about what could possibly happen, but I'm feeling pretty good about it. Nice. Excellent. Yeah. I know you'd also mentioned that, um, you know, you kind of want to talk a little bit about uh, people that might be have uh, collection, like things yeah. in collections and maybe delinquencies or something like that. Uh, there are a lot of people that are kind of stuck. Yeah, you know, there's a that. lot of misconceptions when it comes to collections and what to do, what not to do. I want to buy a home. Oh, my gosh, I better start calling up these companies and paying them off. Mm -hmm. You know, paying on a collection will actually lower your credit score. Mm -hmm. And most people have never heard that. They're like, wait a minute, that makes no sense. If I'm going to pay off a bad debt, why would it lower? Right. Now, I've said this 3,000 times in my life. That being said, I always piggyback that up by saying I would never tell you not to pay debt that you don't owe. Mm. That's not my goal. I'm not telling you to run from your debt. Yep. But your goal is to purchase a home. And if you start paying off these collections, every account on our credit report has what's called a DOLA, a date of last activity. Mm. Let's say that you and I both have an auto loan. Mm -hmm. The date of last activity is July because we're in July. Mm -hmm. On a collection, it's dead. It sits there. There's no activity. Mm. So the date of last activity is 2015. Yeah. And you want to buy, so you're like, oh, my gosh, I better call up um, IC Systems, and I better pay this account off. Well, you just re-aged it. You put a date of last activity of 2019, but not only that, it's still reporting. Now it's just reporting a $0 balance. There still has the word collection on there. Right. Yep. So first, let's take a look at what needs to be settled and what doesn't. Typically, anything less than $2,000 I can get by with it. Mm -hmm. Now that's different on charge offs. That might be a little bit different. That might be a different time that we're on here together, but yep. charge offs, different story. It's charged off. Again, we can get into that. Mm -hmm. But when it just comes to strictly collections is don't just start calling up these companies and paying them. Your score will drop, especially if you don't have a lot of positive activity. Because mm -hmm. it brings everything that. current. And it's bringing everything current. Yeah. And that's usually much more impactful for credit scores, correct? Yep. Yep. Just I'm going to put you on the spot real quick. Yeah. How long on average would you guess a collection company holds on to debt for? I have no idea. Uh, I know that a lot of times when you look at like hard pulls on credit lines, they'll say 30, 60, and 90 days um, for like the activity and whatnot. But That's payment history, though. Yeah, for payment history. So on a collection, most common answer is seven years. Oh, I always okay. say seven years because it's on my credit report for seven years. Yep. Well, it's written in the federal guidelines. It's your job to make sure that your credit report is accurate. So if you just let it sit there, it's just going to sit there. Mm -hmm. But on average, a collection company holds on to debt for 90 to 120 days. Oh, okay. And so that's I was kind it. of in the ballpark almost. You and I that's own a collection company, and Jill owes us 1000 bucks. You just sell the debt off. and We're going to send her letters. We're going to call her. But we're in it to make money. we got to mm -hmm. make money. we got to keep the lights on. Mm -hmm. On to the next one. But what we don't have to do is we don't have to go to the bureaus. TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, and we don't have to say, hey, clean up Joe's credit for her. Right. So then it just sits there for $1,000 on her credit report. So she calls them up. She tries to pay it. Oh, you don't, you don't even owe me, they might say. Well, then get it off my credit. They don't, they don't have to. Yeah. So, again, it's just going to know, but gets getting, going back to just knowing what your rights are, mm -hmm. how to take the proper steps to make sure your credit is accurate, it's verifiable, and it's in the best position possible for you to go get the financing that you need. Mm hmm yeah. So it's all about education. Like <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I'm still massively ignorant about a lot of different things, you know, for sure for credit. So yeah. uh, when you were talking about it during the presentation, when we were kind of first getting to know you, like yep. a lot of it was like, this is really good information for not only myself, of course, for but sure. like uh, buyers and, yeah. and everything. Uh, really so, anybody. I mean, yeah. anybody that's ever had or borrowed money, how can I maximize it? Mm -hmm. How can I maximize what I have opened? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So those are uh, some some of the key levers to yeah. kind of pull um, that we just went through right now. Um, so for people that are also like kind of looking into getting mortgages and whatnot, what are you? Um, what kind of different products are there that are available? Um, do you you work a lot with like first time home buyers, people that are kind of traditional home buyers, yes. and, and sometimes investors potentially as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, across yeah. the board. I mean, most of my clientele is the. Uh, Fannie, Freddie, conventional, standard conventional, or FHA. Um, I do, I have done quite a few of Minnesota housing, so the down payment assistance. Oh, yep. And then uh, rehabilitation loans, you know, pretty much across the board. But, mm -hmm. you know, the, the programs that 
my clientele and my our age group, a lot of them are doing my favorites, the, the Home Possible and Home Ready, mm-hmm. 3% down, cheaper mortgage insurance, a um, little bit better rate, just mm-hmm. take an online class when you're watching a movie some night. Oh, I see. So yeah. they're really yeah. nice programs, or, this, or else obviously your standard FHA, 3.5% down. Yeah, for sure. Now, is the lower mortgage interest um, still through the life of the loan similar to FHA? or Yes. Oh, it yep. is, okay. 30-year lock loan. Um, oh, I'm sorry, the mortgage insurance? Yeah, because it it's like MIP, right? No. Oh, no. Uh, on conventional, 80% will fall off on the on the conventional. Ah, okay. So it's a little different than FHA. Then. It is different oh, than okay. FHA. Sorry, okay. misunderstanding. Yeah. Uh, but you are going to start out with, because you are doing the first time, or the, the home buyer program, mm-hmm. you are going to start out at cheaper mortgage insurance, oh, which I is see. a huge benefit to the borrower. For sure, yeah. Yeah, and then if it falls off, that's way better. You yeah. Know, you don't have to refi out of that's it or right. anything like that's that. That's right. At yeah. 80% will fall off. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Definitely interesting loan programs out there. Um, what do you kind of see? Uh, you know, we're a lot of people are feeling like we're a little top heavy yeah. on, on the market and um, some people are kind of relaxing standards for lenders and everything like that. Are, do you have like kind of a somewhat of an input being an insider for? I, I'm feeling pretty good, honestly. I mean, I know the house values are going up. The sales prices are going up. The interest um, rates are going down. So that can only. <laughs> rates are going down, but if they start plateauing and staying or going up a little bit, I mean, that's not going to be a bad thing, but applications are still going up. Mm-hmm. People still want to purchase. Yep. Um, you know, they're not, we're not lending to four, we're not lending $400,000 to people making 50 grand anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, that was one thing that got us into the problem in the past. I mean, the, the guidelines and the restrictions are night and day different than they used to be. For sure. The process is a lot harder than it used to be. Um, so I, I am, I'm, I'm confident. I'm feeling good about what the future holds. Mm-hmm. For sure. That's excellent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely a good report. Definitely a good yeah. report. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to kind of discuss um, uh, for people that are probably interested in uh, learning a little bit more about credit or uh, maybe yeah, I mean, buying a home? I'm like always, that? I make myself available to educate um, any, any way that I can, mm-hmm. whether that's through Facebook or email or phone call. Mm-hmm. I am always here to help. Mm-hmm. And I've told you guys in the beginning, I don't expect to work with all of your clients, but even if you don't work with me, uh, I'm here to help. I'm here to answer questions on should I pay this off or what will this do or should I open this? That's what I'm here for. So exercise that. You can always reach out any way that you want. Um, So if they did want to reach out to the uh, credit wizard. Yeah, right. (laughs) Uh, Email may be best. It's B-R-Y-A-N dot K-E-R-S-W-E-L-L, Brian dot Kurzweil at Fairway. M C as in mortgage company dot com. Again, Brian dot Kurzweil at Fairway MC dot com. Or else look me up on Facebook and we can message back and forth to get the ball rolling. Nice. Blow them up, people. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and then also, um, I don't know, uh, I'm Minnesota and Wisconsin, I'm licensed in along with a couple other states, but r- right across the border as well, Minnesota, Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. And you probably have other people in your network across different states. I do. Varying. Yes, I yeah. do. So. Yeah. If uh, we have some maybe out-of-state listeners, Absolutely. you could just kind of recommend them, uh, head them in the right direction, Yes, people in your network. Yep. Perfect, perfect. And yeah. I still, and that has happened quite a bit, and I still keep in touch with those clients throughout the process to make sure they have excellent. no questions yeah. that I can answer. For sure, yeah. yeah, Excellent, excellent. Okay. Well, I think that's uh, all we awesome. have for you today. Okay. But, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Of course.